The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hey, everyone. Just wanted to let you know, like usual, we're going to give everybody about two more minutes to finish hopping on. So we will get started in just a couple of minutes. Thanks. All right, so we wanted to welcome y'all to the next installment of our manager's webinars. For those of y'all tuning in for the first time, I'm Bethany, Senior Operations Manager for Hand and Stone, and I wanted to take a moment to welcome my new co-host, Lauren. Hey! She's been on the corporate team with us for nearly two years now, and this is after serving as a spa manager for over two years at a, as a manager in New Jersey. Hi, everyone. So we're so excited to introduce you to our next topic, Spa Superstars, Tips from Top Performers. Awesome. So we have a couple of topics that we were going to talk about today. Um, we wanted to cover a few of the areas that aren't normally covered. So we talk all the time about, um, we talk all the time about top performing categories in the weekly updates. We talk about them in our um, weekly spotlights, conference, um, and there's a lot of topics that we don't get to cover all of the time as far as in these spotlights, but that we wanted to take a moment to acknowledge as far as top performers. Yeah, so we do try to spotlight, you know, top performers all year round, whether it be through, you know, the leaderboards that on Sundays, weekly updates, conference, quarter and review, so, all about you guys today. All right, so for our first one for conversion, we on the ops team no longer look at just conversion as a whole. We're constantly breaking things down between new and repeat conversion, and we just added the ability to measure our gift card conversion as well. This allows us to determine exactly where to focus and what scripting needs to be restored. So the spas in these categories are being recognized for their strong conversion in the two areas that are known to be more difficult. And they show us that our expectations should not be lower for these areas. That's exactly right, Bethany. These clients are not less likely to join, and all of these spas prove it. Last month's manager's webinar was on mastering member retention. So we have our top performers for attrition as well. One thing to take into account with low attrition is the active member base. Without an active member base of above at least an 85% or more, you are just delaying the inevitable by hanging on to your suspended or frozen members. So all of these spots highlighted for low attrition achieve this goal as well. So these are real members. Right, so again, what we did was we interviewed the top performers on this slide to get their tips. So let's take a second to go through all the things they do to lead our corporation in these areas. 
Sounds good to me. So it's normally our recommendation that we allow a non-member gift card to be applied towards member pricing should that prospect join our lifestyle program that day. And Littleton, Colorado has really mastered this approach. They've done a fantastic job in just dominating their gift card conversion. The key, they look up gift cards before the service even takes place. This way, they know what remaining balance the client should could have if they sign up. The trick is to know before. That way you aren't doing math on the spot because I don't know about y'all, I hate math. So yeah, I am the worst at math. That's my least favorite thing in the world. Um, but I really love this strategy. So changing, changing the gift card price from non-member to member is really one of the smartest ways to show your prospect the value they're receiving here. We can also remind them, of course, that they pay nothing to get started. Their service is covered by that gift card. And really, they're only committing to one more service. So what do they have to lose, right? Ulyss in Texas is a superstar in repeat conversion. They've made their motto, information is power. So are you noticing a common theme yet? They take the time to research, just as Littleton does, with each and every prospect, starting at the time of the booking call. Using all of the information they receive, they convert that repeat with a personable approach using our repeat pitch. Yes, information really is power. Repeat prospects are so exciting because you have so much more information to work with and a connection is already established. So for those of you listening, we really can't say this enough. We have a separate pitch for those repeat prospects. So remember, repeat prospects have heard that membership pitch before, so we cannot give them the same thing. Keep your ears listening for essays committing this hashtag fatal flaw. It is my and Bethany's shared vision to go to every spa we support and see that our spa associates know this repeat pitch. Yep, this is your public service announcement. We're going to be checking. So <laughs> Castle Rock, Colorado says when it comes to attrition, they loop their front desk in on their goal tracking to give them ownership of it as well. They also appointed a customer retention specialist, which I love. And this person handles suspends, updating credit cards, calling to schedule clients with built up packages. And this way, um, this ensures that these members at risk are being paid attention to frequently and in a positive and effective way. Yes, I really love that idea. The customer retention specialist, so smart. Um, they also have what Jess calls a family centered culture in their spa. They make sure that they call their clients by their name, always making them feel special every time they enter the spa. Just as we spoke about on that member retention webinar in January, keeping your members engaged is really key for low attrition. So do you guys see anything different about this appointment book here? I do. Yes. So we love this unique approach to identifying prospects. It's the prospect color change. So one of the biggest reasons a spa struggles with repeat conversion is because they really don't even realize that they're pitching to a repeat prospect. So you want to use settings and Millennium to paint a clear picture for your front desk team for what the day holds. Your spa associates can assess the book for the day and begin to plan their approach to each prospect right away, even before that client enters the lobby and prepare. This is one of the approaches that Castle Rock, Colorado uses also. And there's that preparation theme again. It says easiest changing the appointment category. I love it. So our next spa superstar category is going to be on employee attrition. This percentage is pulled based on information from Millennium showing employee start dates and termination dates. With an industry that sometimes seems as if to be a revolving door, these three spas have really mastered the art of retaining their employees. So congrats, guys. Middletown, New Jersey has a really great motto. They believe that people work for people, not companies. I love this quote. It really reminds me of my days as a manager. Building strong connections with your employees is really vital to their satisfaction. When you learn how each employee responds to praise and reprimands, you can manage your employees better and improve your small culture. Right, Hamilton, New Jersey believes it's all about being clear with expectations and being fair-minded. 
So their employees are aware of goals and expectations right from the beginning with consistent monthly evaluations to track progress transparently. With these expectations set, manager Nikki says it's also important that she never requires something of her employees that she would not do herself. So this sometimes means working a night shift. Their motto is as simple as the golden rule. Treat others how you'd like to be treated. Amen to that. It's really all about learning to be flexible with each personality. These are people, not machines, so we need to take that into account. When it comes to tracking this, there is a tab in the BI tool that shows you your rate of employee turnover, but it does require accuracy in Millennium. So make sure that you're entering the termination date, and that's what allows Millennium to communicate with the BI tool to give us an accurate turnover rate. The employee engagement toolkit shown here is really like the best kept secret of hand and stone tools, but I mean, come on, it shouldn't be kept a secret. So here it is. <laughs> um, a few years back, we surveyed employees from approximately 60 spas in the system to make sure the information was valid. 70% of our employees were satisfied, but after implementing the practices in this toolkit, we were able to increase this by 10% in just three months. All right. And often our first reaction is to direct behavior with employees by incorporating things like reductions in pay, write-ups, um, schedule changes. But we believe in managing your employees by highlighting and honoring good behavior. This sends the same message, only in a more positive way. Promoting good behavior with lunch, ideal schedules, days off. This is how we build a positive culture and retain employees. Um, there's a saying, you'll attract more flies with honey than you will vinegar. And as our top performers above told us, it's the truth. We need to reward good behavior rather than punish the bad. The category likelihood to recommend in SMG is considered to have the greatest connection to actual revenue. This is why we consider this to be our strongest indicator of performance. Our top performers in this category are above the chain average by almost 15% or more each. All right, now our perception average is way more important than many people tend to think. So this score is the average of the rating on questions including cleanliness and ambiance of the reception area, the reception staff's welcoming, and how long a client waits in the reception area before going back for an appointment. Many spas think it's tied solely into the reception staff's friendliness or accuracy, and that's not the case. Simple things like magazine clutter, a loud lobby, or even lighting can affect these scores the same way a genuine connection or smile can. And I know some of, your, some of my spas are probably out there smiling because you're remembering me coming in and collecting all of your magazines. This is why. <laughs> <laughs> I've started doing that too now because of you, Bethany. <laughs> <laughs> At Murfreesboro, they really understand that the client is the heart and soul of the business, not a bother. They believe that customers are doing them the favor by giving them the opportunity to do business with them. And these clients' first impression of us begins before they even enter the building. It really begins on the phone at the time of booking. This is why we often stress listening to and perfecting your phone calls. Call yes. and questions while using the client's name often, confirming details, and being personable are all a part of the magic recipe to that perfect first impression. So true. Once we've given that great impression, we then have to continue it in person as well. You've probably heard us ops managers mention the two-step before. Guys, this is not a dance move. No one wants to see it from me. <laughs> Clients <laughs> just two steps away from the computer screen. When you have to check them in and confirm details, you simply just excuse yourself and take that two step back to your screen momentarily. And last but not least, don't forget to make notes of things such as birthdays, anniversaries, even a vacation that was talked about last visit, because then you can follow up with that client in a fun and connected way. Yes, and I love how Tiffany mentioned that this is Bee Cave's recipe for success in last month's manager's webinar. Yes. I really think the theme here is to be as personable as possible so that they always feel appreciated and attended to. And this definitely goes for when things go wrong as well. 
Um, their spouse, like Warrington, PA, who believe their biggest reason for high SMG scores is their focus on addressing issues immediately. If the solution requires, say, an authorization from a manager who's not in, Spouse associates can be trained on the proper verbiage that lets the customer know they're actively looking to find a solution. Yes. So coach them to acknowledge the situation with a simple line such as, okay, I will connect with my manager directly so we can provide the best possible resolution and we will call you no later than tomorrow afternoon. Remember, we never want to leave with that word, unfortunately. Always leave with a solution. Mm-hmm. When we see a score that's concerning, we're often unsure of what steps to take to improve it. Okay, managers, I hope everyone's sitting down right now because we are about to blow your mind. Report Builder and SMG actually allows you to refine your results to that of just your members. So if the score is low, it's a trigger to dig deeper. And this tool right here can really help you determine what action you need to take. Oh my gosh, is this not amazing? I love it. <laughs> There's also an averages explain document on the SMG site. Both of these tools let you see what part in the client experience needs more attention so you can really boil it down. So helpful. I love it. But that's not the only new tool we have for you. So we, I know several of my spas are already familiar with phone call conversion and have begun tracking it. Um, so why? Because this allows them to see how many leads are turning into actual appointments and prospects. It's calculated by taking the number of new prospects on the BI tool and dividing it by the total number of unique leads. And the call conversion above is the percentage of calls of our top performers that they have turned into appointments. So too often we really hear from our spouse about how they're concerns about prospects, and we identify this as really where the ball is getting dropped. The calls are coming in. We're doing everything we need to do for grassroots, marketing, but then our spa associates just aren't turning them into appointments. So all of the effort for, those, for getting those prospects to call is lost. That's right. It's not always marketing. More often it's operations, and that's where we come in. Amen to that. Allen, Texas empowers their team to save every lead. So they offer a $10 coupon to clients if they can't accommodate their appointment to get them in on another day. They educate their spa associates on the cost of a lost lead. So they really understand the importance of saving these. Yes, and consistent role play is really a key coaching technique here. You can also use the phone skills webinar and then the phone call challenge to further their knowledge, all available on the LMS tool. Yep. In Q3 of 2018, we held an advanced spa associate training workshop on phone calls. Hopefully most of y'all remember. You can use these slides in the recorded webinar version to guide your spa associates on how to make the most of each phone call, no matter the caller type. Teach your spa associates to think business. It costs an average of $17 to make the phone ring just once, if you can believe oh. So some of you may also remember seeing our call review workshop in these slides. Yes, this worksheet is awesome. Our top performers certainly remember this. Using this worksheet, spa associates will listen to about 10 calls per week, rating them from a grade of one through five based off the list, the listed checklist. So through listening and rating these phone calls, the entire team is going to be held accountable by each other and consistently aware of expectations. I adore this tool. And for those of you not familiar with available hours, these are the hours that you've scheduled on the books for your service providers that you have the ability to fill with appointments. It's really not always about the number of bodies we have doing services in the spa. Two therapists working, say, 40 hours a week will allow you to book more massages than maybe five therapists working 10 hours a week. That's a big difference. And when compared to the number of services you're doing, this is a great way to track if you need to put more focus on recruiting or actually on phone calls to increase booking efficiency. I really like the point about finding available hours. 
So we overlook our existing staff often because we expect they're not going to want to change their schedule or increase their hours. And often they actually don't want to risk losing appointments by bringing someone new onto the team. So you'll find someone willing to cover. The regional manager, Jake, overseeing the Danver Spa says, we've had several instances where managers have had conversations with part-time therapists, letting them know that we still need to add X amount of hours per week. And they offer the current team first availability to pick up regular hours before they start hiring. And he says they often get these covered. I love that. There's a formula here to determine how many available hours your spa has the capacity for, and it's listed right here on this slide. You may recognize this from your manager's webinars on maximizing your schedule. You count the hours your spa is open in a week, and you multiply it by the number of rooms for your weekly capacity for available hours. Then you divide your current available hours by the potential available hours to get the percentage that you currently have scheduled. Jake also tells us that putting things in terms of hours also helps their managers have a clear understanding of how available hours has an impact on their service sales and their comps. Managers understand that an hour equals at least a $59.95 intro service in sales. So it's a perspective thing. Saying you need to add an additional 17 hours this week rather than saying you're down $1,000 in sales for the week changes the tone and still pushes the results that their team is looking for. He says having a major focus on available hours has had a tremendous positive impact on their business. And you do not need to rely on Millennium anymore to pull these available hours. You can get them from the BI tool now. Woo! You'll simply go to Employee Evaluation Reports under Summary and then scroll over to find the hours scheduled. These are your available hours. And better yet, it allows you to see for each individual service provider the amount of hours they had scheduled and how many appointments they each did in comparison. So convenient, I love it. At a spa, we see so many beautiful retail displays, but oftentimes we have trouble moving them off the shelf. These three spas prove that it can be done when you work when you work hard to make it a part of the entire facial service experience. Our spa associates also can impact retail sales more than we sometimes think. Our Pure Invention coconut water was the highest selling retail product overall in 2018. Many wow. Spas, I know, right? Many spas offer coconut water at the end of every service. And once the client tries the water, it's an easy sell by the spa associate at checkout. Our top performers often push this as a nice stocking stuffer during the holidays, too. That really is a great idea. I'd really love to get that in my stocking. Yes. <laughs> I'll put it on my list for you, Laura. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie. <laughs> Our top performers are utilizing all of the reports and tools at their fingertips to constantly be transparent with goals and progress. Our esthetician static reports sent every Sunday, also paint a clear picture of each esthetician's average ticket and offer managers an easy way to pull numbers for estheticians' monthly evaluations. Estheticians should constantly know where they stand in their numbers, so posting numbers weekly in the break room is really a great way to ensure they are all aware and on top of their game. Another new fantastic tool that was created by Jennifer Clayton of Peoria, Lake Pleasant, Arizona, is the Daily Shift Report, which don't worry, we'll have a screenshot for you on the next page. This report is handed in daily by each esthetician and tracks not only products and upgrades, but challenges faced by that esthetician that day. I love this tool because not only are you using this to hold your team accountable in sales, but you can also identify patterns and challenges faced. This pattern can then be the subject of a future meeting or training. And most spas are also holding the lead accountable for team performance. The more engaged with the team our leads are, the more successful the entire team becomes. Hold monthly meetings to go over goal progression, spotlight new protocols, and work on consultation role play. Also, ensure your team is always working on continuing their education through our Hand and Stone Elite program. As they work towards this, we can also reach out to, you know, our Dermalogica reps for in-house training, such as maybe a happy retailing course. 
Yep. And percentages don't always translate. So sometimes it needs to be communicated to your team as dollars. And the Marcos are a great example of this with their $1,000 club. When an esthetician sells $1,000 in retail in a month, they become part of this exclusive club. Woohoo. Straight out of Marlton, New Jersey, this monthly checklist you see on the left of, on the slide uses a point system to ensure that all of our estheticians continue on the path of education. Points are earned through various trainings and webinars with an expectation of five points per month per esthetician. This document also will keep track of progress on the Hand and Stone Elite status. Naturally, once again, the more educated and engaged the esthetician, the higher the performance. All right, to Lauren's earlier point about holding your lead accountable for team performance, the lead coaching toolkit provides a roadmap for them on how to coach each team member to success. So if you haven't gone through this toolkit with your lead yet, schedule a meeting ASAP and make sure they're following this awesome guide. Upgrade. These are one of those key drivers for a strong average ticket. And our top performers have really taken it to the next level in each of these areas. Our top Himalayan performers are currently upgrading over six times the chain average. Miami wow. Lakes, I know. Miami Lakes and Glen Allen, Virginia are upgrading at over double the rate of the chain average. Wow. It's just crazy. Upgrades really are, you know, the kind of the low hanging fruit of the spa. And this number is driven by their service providers and the spa associates. These spots have completely mastered this. Exton, Pennsylvania's estheticians know just how awesome the LED service is with 42.2%. And Alexandria, Virginia is taking it a step even further by performing double upgrades at 32.6%. So that is just crazy awesome. Mm -hmm. So you can grow your spa's upgrades by using the package combinations guide to make this easy for your front desk. So if you see a member with more than one package, combine them. Clients will see their results and then choose to pay out of pocket at the next visit to keep up with their skin. Miami Lakes really makes this a priority for their team in placing upgrades at the same level of importance as conversion. Yeah, then Alexandria, Virginia uses their all-stars as an example for the rest of the team. If an esthetician goes above and beyond with upgrades, they will even print out the commission report, blacking out the esthetician's name, of course, and show just how much more they were able to make with upgrades. They also give consistent shout outs to their esthetician and encourage a lot of fun competition between themselves and all of their sister locations to keep the estheticians excited. Glen Allen is a great example of extra member incentives. By incorporating member Mondays, they've increased their upgrades and helped their members feel valued. Love member Mondays, such a cute idea. Right? So our static reports are an incredible tool to help you track progress of your spa and individual employees. You receive these every Sunday. So managers and owners, be on the lookout. The esthetician earning potential spreadsheet is another really awesome, fabulous tool that our top performers are using to show their estheticians the potential impact performing more upgrades can have on their paycheck. Measuring the esthetician's actual upgrades versus their goal is, gives you the ability to measure the exact amount of money left on the table. It's such a motivating tool. I love this tool. All right, so for gift cards, oftentimes we rely on guests to walk in and purchase them, and we forget about our members. Sometimes we even assume the majority of our gift card revenue is coming from members. But the truth is, many spas aren't maximizing their opportunities to sell gift cards to members enough. Our top performing spas never miss an opportunity to plug gift cards to their members. And because of this, they all report higher than 50% of their members purchasing gift cards. Great job. Great job, guys. That's incredible. And while the Q4 Leaders Guide to Gift Card Season largely speaks to successful approaches to the Black Friday and December gift card season, you can also use the best practices listed here all year round, such as, you know, your gift card meeting approaches and, of course, the gift card pitch. Our top performers here really have this pitch mastered and they know how to sell a package 
or overcome a request for an intro with ease. And our spa superstars, never forget about gift cards during the off season. Remember, every checkout is an opportunity to sell a gift card. Keep gift cards on the brain by using the educate and ask approach. Managers, you too, you need to lead by example by asking every single client using this educate and ask approach. And between your holidays, like we are right now, hint, hint, is your perfect time to work to form this habit with your team like these superstars have. Your spa associates will habitually ask about gift cards at checkout and will be more motivated and prepared come time for Mother's Day season and all the other great gift card season ahead. Meanwhile, your weekly sales will increase by those who suddenly respond, oh, actually, my sister's birthday's next week. I do need a gift card. Exactly. And remember, even if they say no, that's not the point. The point is that every member now knows we sell gift cards at a discounted rate to them. And I mean, who knows? Maybe they forgot or believe it or not, never knew. Yes. Shocker. <laughs> And just in case you didn't already know what we meant by educate and ask, we do have it right here for you. The key is to lead with telling clients why they should do something and then giving them that call to action. So you can make sure at your next spa associate boot camp that you're not only role playing membership conversion, but also the check in and check out of members and how this educate and ask plays into that. The hashtag fatal flaw is being too casual with our members just like we talked about on our member retention webinar last month. And don't forget about the essay static reports also. These show gift card sales for each spa associate so you can easily see which are actually implementing this approach and which, you know, conveniently forgot as soon as you left for the day. <laughs> yep. All right, so we went through with all of our different categories for all of our top performers from 2018. We covered a lot of different supporting material for each area and wanted to compile it all here in a list for you. So um, we've got them all here. Yes, and I know some of you are frantically trying to write this down or take a picture with your phone, yeah. but don't worry, guys, we will <laughs> be uploading all of this as supporting material on the owner and manager folder on the LMS. Right. All right. So we got a few good questions. Let's go ahead and take a second and look through, make sure we get them all answered. Yes. So there's a question on here about finding the toolkit and that's gonna be saved on LMS. It's not only under the lead esthetician folder, it's also gonna be under the owner manager folder where we save these webinars. All right, let's see. The daily esthetician shift report, it looks like we can, we can get a copy and share that on the Facebook page. Absolutely. Photo gallery of before and after photos for double and triple upgrades. That might be something to ask the Facebook page as well. I know we have really great before and after photos for LED and such. Um, so that might be something that we can compile. All right. Do we have to classify the category on every appointment book to show the type of prospect? Yes. But the good part is, is there's only three categories. It's one for members, white for members, purple for new prospects, and green for repeats. If your spa associates in the habit of changing this at the time they book their appointment, you're encouraging them to do their research into recognizing what kind of prospect they have. And a lot of spas also make it the make it an opening duty for their opener in the morning to just go through the schedule and make sure all of the appointments are classified. Yes. All right. It looks like. Those were, we got answers out to most of the questions. All right. So, and I just have our next one coming up. Yes. So, our next episode of the manager's webinars are going, it's going to be on Tuesday, April 16th at 11.15 a.m. And we're going to be talking about all about our hashtag shared vision. So, we hope to see you guys there. Yep. Thank you so much for joining us today and we will see y'all on April 16th.
Thank you so much, guys. Bye.